I'm positively tickled pink watching you guys over on Instagram and seeing how you're incorporating all these composition ideas and concepts and techniques into your work. So thank you for tagging me. I cannot wait to now see what you do with what we learned this week. What's shaking bacon? I'm Joni Simon. Welcome to my studio. I'm a professional food photographer and I share with you every single week what I know in hopes that it will make your food photography journey easier so you can do what you love. So today continuing on in our series all about composition as a part of the Bite Shop Book Club and if you're not caught up to speed on what the book club is, I've got all the details linked down below. And so this whole month we have been focusing on mastering composition from Richard Garvey Williams. And so this is the third installment now. Uh, the first week we talked about the idea of visual weight and then we got into the idea of lines. And I know I've been seeing some folks over on Instagram saying, oh, I'm seeing lines everywhere now. Like all of a sudden those light bulbs are going off. And so hopefully we'll have more light bulbs going off this week by talking about the concept of salience, which if you're following along in the book, uh, you can find the details to this and more in depth on page 150. And so when we talk about salience that is the level of impact that that image is having on the viewer for the concept of you know how quickly do they understand what the image is about and how much does it connect with them how much impact does it have but real quick before we jump into the tips one of the things that I talk with a lot of people about just in terms of composition and where sometimes we can go wrong in food photography and photography in general is not having a strong sense of what is our primary subject what is the most important thing in the entire image? Whether you have one item or you have 100 items, there should be one thing in that image, one particular focal point, the subject, the thing that is the ultimate point of your image in order to communicate with your viewer. And that if you don't know where you're trying to direct the eyes to, then creating a composition that helps support that focal point is gonna be challenging. So just something to think about as you're setting up your scenes, where do you want the eyeballs to go and where do you want them to land? And ultimately that's going to be your subject. So in order to demonstrate all of these concepts, I went ahead and set up a photo shoot with one of my favorite subjects in the whole entire world, and that's a big old juicy hamburger. And so you will see through all the points that I'm making, the way that I've set up the composition in each of these shots will help complement and support the ultimate destination of the eyes going straight to the primary hamburger. There are some shots where there's multiple hamburgers, but there's one hamburger where I want the eyes to go. And so you're gonna see in these images how I've done that. Now, if you want to see how I set this shot up in the behind the scenes, I have got that all at the very end of the video, which I've been doing in the last couple videos and y'all seem to enjoy it. If you missed the end of the last two videos, you should go check it out. I walk through all the lighting settings, all the details. So anyway, let's hop into salience. So one of the first tips that Garvey Williams gives in order to create salience is by isolating your subject from the background. And so let me show you an example of what I mean. So we've got this picture here of this hamburger. Well, let's say, for example, instead we placed a bottle and a glass right behind it. And suddenly that burger and the glass and the bottle, it all kind of melds together and it's a little harder to decipher our subject, right? I mean, we still know that the main point is the burger in this image, but if we simply move those things to the side so that we have that flat, starker background that's in contrast to our subject, that suddenly that burger is just that much more present and it has that much more impact, so a higher level of salience. So as you're setting up scenes, just pay attention to what else is behind your subject and can you simplify that in order to maybe more fully isolate your subject so it has higher impact. Another tip that he gives is to literally fill the frame with the subject. When we do this, well, obviously, there's only one place for eye to be drawn. Granted, in this image, you can see that we've got some, you know, things in the background, we've got some peripheral, but for the most part, the hamburger is right up in our face. We can't miss it. There's high impact there. But now going back to the prior tip, if then we take away the glass and we take away the other hamburger, maybe something's lost, but maybe we also have an image with even more impact. So you can kind of see how just some of these simple little decisions can really make a big change in your image. 
Another technique that he offers is the idea of zeroing in on our subject by utilizing a more narrow depth of field. So we talk about the aperture. If you're not familiar with aperture and your manual camera settings, I've got a video right up over here. You can go check that out. Uh, but that lower F number. So for example, this image was shot at F 1.8. It's a more narrow depth of field and really zeroes in on that very specific burger because our eyes are always going to be drawn to whatever is most in focus. Now, just for a point of comparison, I took the same exact shot, but at f4.5, so a wider depth of field. Although in reality, 4.5 is still pretty narrow, but all that being said, you get the basic idea of how that narrow depth of field can really zero us in on the subject. But what I would also say is if that is the technique you're using every single time in your photography in order to direct the eye, uh, you know, mix it up sometimes, challenge yourself, get outside of that you know narrow depth of field world and experiment with a wider depth of field because honestly, it'll really challenge you to think about other tools in your composition in order to drive the eye, not just that depth of field. But at the same time, it's also a really effective tool in order to create salience. All right, the next tip that he offers up is to utilize the lines in the image in order to draw our eye to the subject. So this image, for example, granted, the burger's in the front, it's most in focus, so that really helps. It's also separated from that background but additionally helping support and direct the eye is that we have that second burger and the fries that are off to the right. Well, the board that they're on and the direction that that burger and fries is oriented is leading us in a path that connects straight to that front burger. So that really helps to bolster and support the direction of the eyes moving to that primary burger. But now one other fun little footnote, going back to the conversation from last week about lines, is you can see that's on a diagonal, right? The those two burgers connect to create that diagonal. And so then the beer in the glass and then the beer in the bottle, it's also on the same exact diagonal because it's mirroring, right? It's kind of a parallel there, creates this nice sort of sense of harmony. We've also got the balance of the visual weight, the, the brightness of the burger on the right, and then those two subjects on the left, it balances ah, all the composition tools coming into play right in one image. I, I don't know, are you having fun yet? I'm having a blast. All right, so then the next tip is utilizing the light in order to shed some light on our subject. The idea that, for example, in this image, that the main primary burger is the brightest thing in the image in contrast to an otherwise darker image. The same would be said for if it was a really bright image and then you had something that was darker by creating that sense of contrast that helps draw our eye. And so you can see in this image, the way I constructed it and the way that I set up the lights, I was very intentional to make sure that the light was directing to the burger and specifically to that front burger the most and that then it's kind of darker in the background that the light isn't hitting the backdrop as much and that it's not hitting the beer and the bottle quite as much. But then you can see too, we can make it even more dramatic and perhaps create even more salience, maybe not, but by using a different modifier, right? The previous image, I shot that with a 55 inch, very large octagon soft box that really spreads the nice soft, even light everywhere. But then what I did is I swapped that out for a smaller 24 inch round soft box that's very intentionally directing the light to that main burger. You can see that's really dark in that background. It's dark in the beer, but you can see then it even further zeroes in and creates a more dramatic feeling. So by utilizing different kinds of lighting scenarios and setting up your lights differently, but ultimately paying attention to which is your primary subject and how is the light falling on it in order to create contrast in your image to make that subject stand out. And then the final tip, which I think is super fun to play with in food photography and super relevant to the work that we do is understanding the idea of a frame within the frame, right? Because of course our image is a frame, right? It's a particular crop and there's some things that are in the image and of course there's things that we crop out of the image. Well, within that image, it's really a helpful tool to drive the eyes to the subject by then further framing that particular subject. So you can see, for example, 
example with this image is that I have created a frame with the edges of the table that that is really helping us narrow in zoom in and frame that subject then that flat lay of those burgers but of course it doesn't have to be like the table itself it could be a platter it could be a round plate it could be anything that creates a shape around our subject, that we have that primary subject, where we want the eyes to go, how can we frame that and support it by encircling it or surrounding it, closing it in with some sort of framing. So definitely something to play with, something to think about. How can you frame your subject in order to say, here's where I want the eyes to go. So just a couple helpful tips for the next time you hop into a shoot, hopefully you can keep some of those things in mind, start trying them out for yourself. Uh, but one thing that I wanted to make sure to talk about that uh, Garvey Williams puts so eloquently in this book and I wanted to make sure to share with you. Uh, for those of you with the book, this is on page 169. Composition is not just about putting a few lines in an image and balancing the weight you can have a carefully composed shot that tells us virtually nothing other than it's carefully composed. Composition on its own is generally not the purpose of our photographic endeavors. Rather, it's a valuable tool to use if we intend to convey something to others, whether it's a story, a message, insight, mood, or simply some detail of content. And I absolutely love that because it's so true, right? Everything that we've gone over in the last three weeks are tools that are great things to consider and keep in mind in order to communicate with our viewer. But ultimately, the most important thing in any single image is what we bring from here and what we bring from here. It's that creativity and those are the things that really have the most amount of impact. That when we bring that sense of story, we bring our heart and our mind and our soul into it and we pair that with a couple of these helpful tools, those are images with impact. So now what we're gonna do next week is I'm going to be here live. This is not gonna be pre-recorded. I'll be live here on YouTube. At the same time, I do my upload every single week, 7 a.m. Mountain Standard Time on Thursday, and we'll go live together, and I'm gonna have some extra special guests from the audience and be able to talk about what we learned, what are some of those aha moments, and go through maybe a couple of the other big highlights from this book. So I hope you will join us live, and thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a fantastic week. You stay out of trouble and I'll see you here next week. Okay. Bye.